Why, hello there, weary traveler. Are you curious why I'm at negative 11,800? Why? I am as well. I am also curious. Um, I guess you're just going to have to watch to find out. Oh. Hello. Oh, hey. Didn't see you there. Welcome back. It is I, Surface Fusion. And I'm back with some Infinite Worlds. This is episode five. We have truly, truly gotten ourselves established here in the multiverse. And we are not going to stop here. Since our last episode, I have been working. And I built this little bit of a structure. Uh, it's not done yet. Uh, but don't worry, I will finish it. Uh, at some point. But I would like to talk to you a little bit about the plan for today. Uh, as you can see, I had a little bit of an encounter with some pillagers. I now have the bad omen effect. Uh, and I do not want to accidentally start a raid because I am definitely, definitely not prepared for that at the moment. Uh, while we do have lots of good stuff now, uh, I've also done some obsidian mining, as you can see, uh, and obviously I've had to mine some stone in order to make this happen. Um, I'm still working with mostly iron gear. I have a elytra with no unbreaking, no mending. Oh, is this going to go away after 22 minutes? Because I was just going to drink some milk. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, as I was going to say, my first order of business for today... I almost fell out of bed there. My first order of business for today is to go find a cow and milk that cow and chug the milk. And then, after that, I would like to begin working on our hub world. Uh, which I am going to... Uh, which which we're which we're gonna do together? It'll be fun. Um, I've also been experimenting with some uh, audio settings. Um, video has been pretty decent. I was just using uh, the Windows or Xbox game recording, uh, just built-in game recording, <laughs> which is not a particularly great way to do things however uh it does work and in terms of audio quality that's really where it struggles uh it can record hd video just fine but the audio is was real bad and you probably noticed that uh but in the last couple of episodes i've been using obs to record uh however the way that i did that before it changed the uh, audio quality or no it changed the video format to a really weird format and then when I uh, converted the video back it desynced the audio so you may have noticed in the last two episodes uh, the audio was desynced now I probably could have fixed that <laughs> in video editing I was just too lazy to try to do that for every single little clip uh, so I've done some more testing, and I think I've gotten it to a point where it will now be functional, and I can, uh, with hopefully, uh, so hopefully this episode audio quality is better. Uh, I'll go watch this clip back, and after we're done here, and we'll see. Did I already break my elytra? Not yet. I just didn't trigger it. Uh, so... Yeah, I'll watch this back in a little bit, and we'll see how it goes. But hopefully, I'm starting to sound a little bit more uh, human-like, 
a little less robotic like. Uh, there's some cows. And yeah. Hey, there we go. Bad omen. Gone forever. Now, a fun little trick. I don't know if I've showed you this before, but um, <laughs> in the recipe book, this compass over on this tab over here, uh, that that shows you where spawn is. Uh, so I've been using that a lot uh, since I figured that out. Uh, basically, that makes compasses kind of useless. Uh, except for with the lodestones, and now we will be getting a lodestone uh, at some point later on. Hey, there, there we are. Uh, but yeah, that that will allow us to find our way in other dimensions. Uh, hopefully, we'll find some lodestones, uh, and not have to craft them ourselves because they do require netherite, mm. which is a pretty big deal. Um, but yeah, the, one of the cool things about the snapshot is we get about half of the nether update stuff. So we don't get all the newest stuff, but we get some of the older stuff. Um, so yeah. Um, I'm going to get some books prepared, and then we can pop over through our portals up there uh, into what's going to be our uh, hub world. This is a beautiful sunrise. Sunset. My bad. This is a beautiful sunset over the snowy mountains over there. Moon coming up over the roofed forest. There's our humble home over the hill. creepy crawlies coming out. I can't be bothered by them. We'll be fine. Hey. Hey you. Are you subscribed? Because if not, you should really think about subscribing for more high quality content. And once you subscribe, you should press that little bell notification. Ring that bell, you know? It's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool little bell. It'll tell you when I make a new video. And then you can come check it out. Especially now that my audio quality isn't the worst you've ever heard. Uh, hopefully that will uh, give you a little bit of incentive to do some subscribing. Alright, so in case you're wondering, this world that we are entering into is the nothing world. Beautiful yellowy brown portal. Exactly what you're looking for. And let's grab our shulker boxes. I'm actually going to go ahead and make some slabs. Uh, for us to use. Let's grab up our shulker boxes and make our way in. These portals are very noisy. Ah, yes. Here we are. Yeah, so I'll be building my hub world in the nothing dimension, which will be a ideally a great place. In the in the nothing dimension, we can build a whole lot uh, without being bothered. In the next episode, I'd also like to do some testing. Um, 
Particularly, I'd like to test mob spawning in a few different dimensions, as well as sleeping in the dimensions that have a daylight cycle. So there's only a few of those. Uh, some of the dimensions don't have daylight cycles. Obviously, we already tested sleeping in the surface fusion dimension, but that world does not have a daylight cycle. Uh, I would also like to test out the respawn anchors and also the block ratio. So what I mean by that is um, the ratio of blocks between uh, the overworld and that dimension. So, for instance, in vanilla Minecraft, the ratio from the nether to the overworld is 8 to 1 or 1 to 8. So one block in the nether is equal to eight blocks in the overworld. Uh, so I have a feeling that that's a randomized trait. So some of these worlds that we're exploring might have different uh, ratios. So I'd like to take a look at that. I'd also like to get some mob farms set up, particularly for the hostile mobs uh, from the overworld dimension, just so that we can get a good supply of gunpowder so we can fly around and stuff like that. So, I actually realized that there's a secret message encoded in the title of these books. And that message has to do with the location that the book is actually taken from. So, every time we take a book from this location, it's going to tell us that this book is taken from minus 10, minus 8, which is the, the chunk that we're in. Zero is the rotation of the block. Nine is the distance from the edge of the chunk, and 81 is the height. And we can actually confirm that by looking at the F3 menu. If you look right over here in the chunk section, this says minus 10, minus 8. Just this X and this Z. So that is, we are in chunk minus 10, minus 8. Now if we look at this, that says minus 10, minus 8. 0 is the rotation of the block, we'll get to that in a second. 9 is the distance from the edge of the chunk. So if you actually count, you start 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That is 9. And the final part is 81, which is the, uh, if you look at uh, the, where is it? If you look at this line right here, looking at block, that tells you minus 154, 81, minus 113. This 81 right here is the height of this bookshelf. So that means that we can find those dimensions that we lost in the last ep last, uh, or actually in episode three, we can go back to those dimensions. Now the other thing that I realized is that in this dimension, we actually left three copies of books. So these are books that we use to generate those portals. So what that means is that if we throw one of these books in, it's going to give us one of those dimensions that we were in. Meaning that we don't even have to go look for those books in the library because we have copies right here. However, we can uh, we can uh, go back and find a specific one. And if we ever do break these portals again, it's not the end of the world because we can just go back to the library and find the book. So that solves a lot of our problems right there. I'm just going to go ahead and try this first one just to see where it takes us. See if we find it familiar. This orange portal color, I don't remember what world that is, but I'm sure it's one of those worlds that we visited. Ah, of course, it's the one that I didn't want to go to. Okay, hang on, this world is really laggy. Oh god. 
This world is composed of decaying leaves. It's... Oh, and there's phantoms everywhere. Oh, God. Let's get out of here. Hey, there we are. And we made it back. So these worlds are not lost forever. These worlds are pretty easy to get back to. There's several ways that we can get back to these worlds. Is that blue ice? That looks like blue ice, even though it's green. Ah, there's a Ravager. Ravagers are not fun to fight. So let's, uh... I like how there's these fully encased in ships in this world. This is actually the world I wanted to get back into because this one here has our uh, this one here has respawn anchors, which should be really interesting to experiment with. Let's just uh, try to grab a couple of these. Oof, okay, that wasn't good. We can also grab some dark oak saplings, just because... But yeah, there's also abandoned mine shafts here, so like, this world is pretty cool. I didn't realize there were withers in this world. Okay, so it was in this next world that we ended up actually dying. So let's see if we can prepare our water bucket uh, <laughs> to fall down past all the gold pressure plates. Hang on, let's eat while we're here. Uh, yeah, I forgot how laggy this world is. Nice. Oh no. Oh no, this world is just gonna kill everything, isn't it? Oh, yep, that's cr- <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, let's just, uh, Ooh, rip. Okay, hopefully we can open our world back up here.
You, <laughs> the gold pressure plates. It doesn't like them. It really doesn't like them. You can just see all of the items all around. Oh no. <laughs> this was a mistake. I should not have gone back into this world. <laughs> I should have broken this portal. <sighs> okay, yeah. Let's, uh, it got our F3 menu up. Uh, let's see. Entities. Oh. Yeah, this is no good. This is not ideal. <laughs> uh, I wonder if it's going to be able to solve this. And actually, like, because after five minutes, these should all despawn, right? So if I can <laughs> get the game to run long enough, it should be able to actually, like, make this world work just as long as I don't move outwards anymore. Although, that means all my stuff is going to despawn as well. Something about this song is fitting. Can I open my inventory? So it looks like I was able to place the water, which is interesting. I'm now, oh, oh, oh. I would like to pick up the water now. That's gonna be easier said than done. Something just happened. Okay, so what it seems like is every time I save and quit to title and reopen the world, I get like two seconds of movement oh. before everything goes haywire. Now, I'm going to see if I can drop down and actually get my stuff. Seems like a decent idea. Although I have no idea if I'm going to be able to get back up. Oh no. <laughs> oh, oh no. I hear elytra sounds. That means my elytra engaged. Just massive quantities of gold pressure plates. Oh no. Oh. I heard a splash. Did we make it to the bottom? Uh, we're back in the water stream. Okay. What's happened here? Is there void below the pressure plates? Is that what happened? Am I falling into the void? It's probably for the best. See, I thought there was solid ground, but apparently, I guess there isn't. Oh, man. So, yeah, that's why we're flying through the void here. Uh, had a little bit of an issue, and... Now we're just flying forever, I guess. Uh, I don't understand. I don't. I don't really get it. I don't. Honestly, I don't know. I guess this is what it comes to. Just you and me, sitting here, staring at a frozen screen as old surface fusion flies out into the void. Ah, that is actually stunning okay hang on this is worth it this screenshot is makes this whole worth it 
Wow. See, we're going to die here, and we're going to lose all of our stuff. But at least we're going out in style. And we have a pretty decent source of elytras over in the Wither world. Actually, this is a perfect opportunity for me to talk about some of my plans for the upcoming episodes as I fly downwards into the void. I would like to start naming some of these dimensions as we travel further. And I would also like to name some of these biomes. Uh, so our first... Our world that... Our surface fusion world is obviously uh, going to remain named as such. I have the names of some biomes in that world. We have the Red Chest Reef, uh, which could also be called the Starter Chest Reef. Uh, and then we also have the Soul Valley Swamp. Uh, or we could possibly call it the Draconic Swamp. So these are, uh, I might have a pull, uh, up in the, up in the card. So if there's a pull up there, go ahead and fill that out. Uh, whether or not you like Soul Valley Swamp or the Draconic Swamp, uh, as well as the Red Chest Reef or the Starter Reef. Our next world that we entered, uh, the, uh, world where we typed help into the book uh i'd like to call the world exorce which is latin for warped and i'd like to call the biome within the warped savanna our diary worlds that we wrote our diary while lost in the library and tossed that in i'd like to call that world cucurbita which is latin for pumpkin uh we have one main biome there, which I'd like to call the Basalt Grotto. And we have the Lantern Lagoons. And the next world that I'd like to name is our Wither Worlds from our previous episode. Which I would like to call the Periculum. Which is Latin for danger. Uh, Biome-wise, I'd like to call the main biome, the Silver Melon Minefields, uh, which I feel like is self-explanatory. We got the silver fish, we got the melons, and it is a minefield thanks to the withers everywhere. And finally, I'd like to call the cities, the end cities within that biome, the endest cities. Uh, so those are just my ideas so far. If you have more ideas for naming worlds or biomes, uh, please leave a comment and let me know what you think we should call them. Yeah, also, I recently produced a redstone video uh, where I designed a splash potion shop for a Minecraft realm that I play on. Uh, I haven't really seen anything quite like it, so if that sounds exciting to you, please go give that a look. Uh, I've only got a couple of subscribers at this point, so if you're enjoying the video... Ah, there we go, it's loading now. If you're enjoying the video, please ring that bell so that you can get notified when my videos come out. Also, if you've enjoyed, please leave a like. Or at least consider leaving a like, you know? For your old pal surf speed. If you have more suggestions for things I should do in this series, just leave a comment. I've, re I've actually thoroughly been enjoying reading the comments. Uh, there's only been a few so far, but there's a lot of interesting uh, stuff. There's a lot of weird comments that are left by uh, what seem to be bots but you know I'm not complaining um, we're going to try taking all I off 
We're still flying. Why are we flying without an elytra? Is that a is that a is that a thing you can do? You can just take your elytra off while you're flying. At this point, I'm actually curious. If I close the world, saving worlds, and then I reopen the world, what's gonna happen? Oh, there we go. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. As I said earlier, please leave a like, please leave a comment, and make sure you are subscribed with that little bell notification. Um, this has been episode 5 of the World. I'll see you in the next one.